Hello students. In the previous lesson of the same unit, we all learnt about a deadly natural disaster, the tsunami. It caused a huge destruction of the lives and property in various places, especially concentrating on Andaman and Nicobar Islands and as well as Indonesia. The current poem of the same unit is completely contradicting to the previous lesson. It means the previous lesson spoke about how nature can be destructive and furious on human beings sometimes. But the current poem talks about how beautifully nature holds all of us together and how we can try to accommodate if we put some efforts, but we humans fail miserably in putting it together to live in harmony. And now children, take out your textbooks honeydew and open page number 34 in which you have the poem geography lesson and then read through along with me. This particular poem has three stanzas of eight lines each. Firstly, before getting into the explanatory part of the poem, let us go through some of the questions. I have a few interesting questions for you. Have you ever witnessed your city's aerial view? Both during the day and at night. I think majority of us would be easily able to imagine how the city looks during the night because it is nothing but as similar to the night sky which is glaring, glittering and deep dark. And nowadays, it is not at all impossible for us to imagine an aerial view of a particular area at all. The advent of modern technology allows us to go through a lot of options. Even without going in a jet or aeroplane or a helicopter, we can easily look through a drone and find out the aerial view of a position or a place. Here, I have something very interesting for you. I have a set of three videos in which you have an aerial view of the entire world in one and in the second one, you have an aerial view of a particular city in India, both captured during the night and during the day. Enjoy watching it. You enjoyed watching it and imagining your city's aerial view. Now I'm assuming you have your textbooks in hand with the page number 34 open, right? Let's go to the summary of the poem Geography Lesson. The poet of Geography Lesson, Zulfika Ghosh, marks his experiences of traveling on a jet. And here, as he goes higher and higher, he gets to see a lot of visuals of varied experiences. And now he is going to share all his experiences with us and make it very memorable for each one of us. The major concern that the poet tries to bring out in this particular poem is that we human beings have evolved with lot of learning process through a course of time. Especially in the fields of geography, we have learnt a lot of things. Starting from the Big Bang Theory, which tells us the evolution, history of evolution of Earth. And then coming to the shape of the earth, to what it constitutes majorly and what not. Even the functions of volcano and the constitutes of its nature. Everything has been easily identified and moved on with the years of course of time. Now, the poet is again trying to emphasize that though we have learned so much about and beyond earth, we have failed in one particular thing. And that particular thing is about the love and care for each other. He says that we have stopped or failed in understanding to love each other beyond the caste, creed, 
ethnicity, culture and language of our nation. He also concerns that we have forgotten to embrace each other with a lot of love and happiness to live peacefully on this earth. Now, let's move on to the part of reading the poetry and as well as explaining it. As I read through the poem, I will read three lines each at a time and then you go ahead reading it aloud with me. Okay? Is that understood? Yes. Hoping that you will follow me. Take out your textbook and start reading the first three lines of stanza one. When the jet sprang into the sky, it was clear why the city had developed the way it had. Here, it's a very brief introduction to say that the poet has already begun his journey in the jet. He has taken off from the city and now he's saying that he understands as he goes up about why the particular city has been designed in this way. Now, moving on to the next four lines of the first stanza. Read aloud with me. Seeing it scaled six inches to the mile, there seemed an inevitability about what on ground had looked haphazard, unplanned and without style, when the jet sprang into the sky. In the very first line, the poet tries to tell us how clustered and concrete jungle a city could be. Because he's saying that something that could be stretched at a mile is now put into only six inches. That is, it's so claustrophobically planned. Or rather, we can say it is so unsystematically planned, which is again an oxymoron. What is an oxymoron? An oxymoron is something that constitutes of two opposite things together in order to emphasize a particular sentence. Right? Yeah. So here, again, we are going to look at how the city has been not planned at all and still been so haphazard in its way. That is, haphazard. What is the meaning of haphazard here? Can you look into your glossary? Yes, it's available there. The second word in the glossary, that is haphazard, means without plan or proper order. So this is what we are talking about. The entire city does not have a proper plan or order and that is why it looks all claustrophobic and very tightly packed as a concrete jungle. And look at line 3, unplanned and without style. Every particular city needs to have a particular style in order to develop and his particular city lacks it is what he says. And probably that could be the scene majority of the cases in all the cities in the world. Now look into the last line of the stanza, that is, again, the repetition of the first same line. It says, when the jet sprang into the sky. Again, he's trying to emphasize to us that he is on a journey going up above and above. And as he experiences, he is still going to continue his narration about the various things that he is going to see on his way. Now, moving on to stanza two, the poet is now 10,000 feet above his city and here he sees his city shrinking as the geographical area of the same largens. Let's read through the poem and you remember have to read aloud with me. Yeah. When the jet reached 10,000 feet, it was clear why the country had cities where the river ran and why valleys were populated. Here we can see the poet giving us a logical reason for why the river areas, that is, the place near the river bodies and the valleys are thickly populated or densely populated than the other areas of the city. Can you guess why it is so? Now, you should think in your daily routine, that is, what is the most essential part of your daily routine in order to make you stay in that particular place? Think about it. One might be your climatic factors and the second one might be because of the need or necessities of water resources. Water is a major resource of various things that we do in our daily life. Starting from the necessity for drinking and going to transport, business, consuming electricity, everything needs water. And that is probably one of the best reasons why we human beings try and tend to settle down near the water resources. Coming back to valleys, why do you think our valley is thickly populated than the other areas? 
Majorly, if you live in a weather condition which is moderate and very okay for all the seasons, then you will understand why it is very necessary for us to settle down near the valleys. Because valleys have a beautiful climatic weather and they can make you feel better and your living easier. Right? Yes. And that is probably few of the reasons why human beings choose to live near the water bodies and as well as valleys. Now look and read through the last four lines of the stanza. The logic of geography that land and water attracted man was clearly delineated when the jet reached 10,000 feet. Here you have one particular logic given by the poet. That is, he is telling us very keenly that according to the geographical terms, the humans get attracted to land and water. And how emphatic is that, isn't it? Obviously, we cannot live without the proper landscape and a water facility. Isn't that so? And that is why in geography, we have a theoretical logic saying that it is there humans get attracted and occupy the places that are very convenient to them. Look at the last word of the glossary, that is delineated, meaning shown. So, connect the line now with the last two lines of stanza 2. That is, it was clearly delineated when the jet reached 10,000 feet, which means that it was clearly shown why it has been a logical reasoning of geography when he went to 10,000 feet above his city. Now, let's move on to the last stanza and one of the most important stanzas of this poetry that is the third stanza right and now you have to read through the first three lines along with me aloud remember aloud yes when the jet rose six miles high that is probably the highest the jet could reach in all these previous states it was clear the earth was round and that it had more sea than land until now, the poet has been continuously realizing why there are certain things in each strata that he goes through. When he is in level 1, he is able to understand why certain things are in a particular way and when as he goes on, he realizes a lot of other things coming up to him in his mind. Until now, he has only realized, I am emphasizing this and then now, he starts to question after these lines. That is. The last four five lines of the poetry is about contemplating something. So the first three lines of the last stanza tells you the major realization of the poet is that after he rose six miles high, he is able to see nothing but a one single earth. Right? Imagine that particular state when you are able to see only one particular ball like a thing in a dark space. That is earth. And now there is nothing visible to him nor his city, nor his state, nor his district, or his country, or even the continent for that matter. What he is able to see is only a big round earth. And he realizes that nothing matters more than being one, because the earth itself symbolizes that everything in it or under it is all one, is all together. Yes? Yeah. Now, that is the most important realization of the poet in the last paragraph, first three lines. Isn't it? Let us now move on to the last four lines on page 35. In lines 4, 5 and 6 of the last stanza, you get to see how the poet tries to emphasize the niceties of our environment or nature around us and also tries to give us or trigger us with a slight question saying or asking us to contemplate to see why though everything seems one there are a lot of troubles within us human beings yeah now let's read through the lines but it was difficult to understand that the men on earth found causes to hate each other this is really emphatic and very important for all of us to listen and contemplate about. So after listening and seeing all of this through various stratas of his journey, here 
the poet leaves us with a question to ask ourselves about how and why we have so much hatred towards each others when we have plenty reasons or probably one particular reason that we all have to stay together and in harmony to stay peaceful and happy. Yeah. Continuing the last two lines of this stanza. To build walls across cities and to kill. From that height, it was not clear why. So he leaves us all with a strong statement and a sense of question in our mind, which has to linger around for a long time, saying that, I don't understand why from that height, saying, why are the human beings pondering around something that creates a hatred between them, when overall, when you go up above, everything looks only one. And why can't we be like that, a symbolism of nature, where we try to say everything within us and around us is all one. We are all one, is what is the poet is trying to emphasize through this poem. Now that we have completed explaining and reading through the poetry, let me have an interesting question for you. I'm sure you have to work this out in order to get through an interesting answer. The question for you is, compare the main ideas of both the lessons of Unit 2, that is, the tsunami and the geography lesson in order to get an interesting answer about two varied things or two contradictory themes. Okay, I hope you'll do that soon and get back with an interesting answer. Now students, along with your textbook and pencil, take down a sheet of paper so that we can start working with the poem. If you do not have a text, this exercises will appear on the screen so that you can see and solve the questions. Look at question number one. The question goes like this. Find three or four phrases in stanzas one and two which are likely to occur in a geography lesson. So here they are asking us to find terms that could possibly be occurring in a geography textbook. So the probable answers, the answer might vary with you. It is completely fine and excellent if you are able to give varied answers. The answer that I am going to give you is like this. From page 34, stanza 1, line 4. Scaled 6 inches to the mile is now answer number 1. Answer number 2 from stanza 2, line 4. Valleys were populated. Answer number 3, stanza 2, line 6. Land and water attracted man. Moving on to question number 2. Question number 2 is a multiple choice question which goes like this. Seen from the window of an airplane, the city appears and the options given to you are as haphazard as on the ground, second one as neat as a map and the third one as developed as necessary. And the answer for this question, any guesses? Yes, you are right. The right answer for this question is option number 3 which is as developed as necessary. Let's move on to question number 3, which is again a multiple choice question, but here you have the liberty of choosing more than one option. That is, you can choose multiple answers for the same question. So the question goes like this, which of the following statements are examples of the logic of geography? Options given to you. Number 1, there are cities where there are rivers. Option 2, cities appear as they are not from 6 miles above the ground. Option number 3, it is easy to understand why valleys are populated. Option number 4, it is difficult to understand why humans hate and kill one another. Option number 5, the earth is round and it has more sea than land. You give the right answer. The right answer here is option number 1, 3 and 4. If you are right, an applause to you. Going to the last question of the exercise, mention two things that are number one, clear from the height and number two, not clear from the height. Here, you are supposed to give two options for each of the question asked. Okay? And for option number one, they have asked clear from the height and the answer for that is the earth is round and it has more sea than land. For option number 2, that is question number 2 appearing on your screen, 
The answer is why men hate each other and build walls across the cities. Here we end with the exercises. Children, now that we have come to the end of unit 2, after learning the tsunami and the geography lesson, I hope you had a good enjoyable session, also a learning experience. Before I wind up, I would like to let you ponder about a quote. The quote goes like this. We all should love our fellow beings and live in peace and harmony. Only then we earn people rather than losing them. Is what I want to leave you all thinking. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. Until I meet you in the next class.